Hey everyone, in this video we're going to give you a full tour of our self-built camper van. It has a multifunctional bed platform that can turn into a lounge space, a dinette slash working area with a swivel table, and it has a ton of accessible storage. There's also a compact kitchen with simple plumbing and a 12 volt fridge, a toilet with a privacy wall, and a solar power system to power all the electronics. Let's go check it out. For the van, we bought a used 2015 Ford Transit, the one with the highest roof option so that I could stand up, and the medium length. So the medium length is nice because we can park in most parking spaces. We built everything in here from scratch, so everything you see, all the woodwork was built by hand. It took us about five months to build the van, but the whole process was a lot longer, so shopping for the van, doing all the research, designing, and playing around with different ideas and options. It feels pretty amazing now to be in this space that we created ourselves. It's exactly what we wanted, and we're really happy with it. So to start, we have the kitchen here. It's pretty basic and compact, but it's very functional. There's basically three areas. So we have the food prep area with a cutting board over here. Then we have an undermount sink. And at the end here, we have a small flip up table. And we usually just put our uh, butane cooktop on there. Another thing that's on the counter is our charcoal water filter. We get water from all sorts of different sources and it's always sitting in these plastic jugs. So it's nice to be able to filter it before drinking it. For a few things like spices, uh, some mugs and our dish rags and also our cutting boards and oils, we made some open shelving that's easily accessible and it's stuff we use all the time. So it's nice to have it there. Over here in this little cubby, we have a small basket for fruits and vegetables. On the other side here, we have the fridge. It's a top loading 12 volt Dometic. So this runs off of our solar power system. It's not a huge fridge, but we only keep the stuff that has to be refrigerated in there. All the other food is stored in other places in the van. We do lose a bit of counter space by having a top loading fridge like this, but for us, it was really the best option to maximize this space. We didn't want to build a drawer to put it in. And we find that we have quite enough counter space on this side. One thing we have noticed about this kind of uh, top loading fridge is that it does get quite a bit of condensation on the inside. So every once in a while, we have to sponge it up with a paper towel. But what is cool is that cold air sinks. So when you open it from the top, you're not losing a ton of cold air every time you open and close it. And then under the fridge here, we have a big drawer. This is where we put most of our dishes, pots, pans, cutlery. There's a simple little latch here that we've made. And this is it. It looks a little chaotic in here, but it's very functional. So the plumbing system is very basic, but it took us a lot of time to design this and think about it. Basically, we wanted to make sure that we minimize the amount of times that we had to lift water in and out of the van. We have fresh water in these two six gallon jugs right here. And this five gallon bucket here is for the gray water. So there's actually a, a door on the other side that can be accessed from the outside of the van. And we can use a hose most of the time to fill up the fresh water jugs. And if we do have to bring them somewhere and fill them up, we can at least bring them in through that door and not have to bring them up the stairs and inside. For the gray water, we actually drilled a hole through the uh, floor of the van. And under the van, there's a quick release hose. So we can plug in a hose and drain it that way. So again, we don't have to lift that bucket in and out of the van. To pump the water, we have a very simple marine foot pump. So this takes no electricity and it's really easy to install. The foot pump is awesome because we can really control the flow of water quite precisely, which is great when you have a limited water supply like this. It doesn't make any noise and I, I think it's just a great option for a small camper van like this. We actually made a full video explaining how this whole system works. I'll put a link to that in the description of the video if you want to check it out. Uh, the only thing I would change, and we're probably going to do that next summer, is we're going to add a P-trap and that's going to help block the smell that sometimes comes up 
from uh, the gray water. This bed was a very complicated piece of furniture for us to design and it was really important for us to get it right. We knew we'd be using the van as kind of a home and office on wheels and so we knew that this area needed to be a lot of different things. So it can be a bed but we also wanted to be able to kind of lounge in bed and watch a movie so we made this adjustable backrest. If we want it to be a couch we can also take out this centerpiece and then we have a couch here and then what that also does is it creates two seats so we also have a dinette where we can sit across from each other we wanted it to be comfortable so we didn't want to have um, cracks in the cushions where our shoulders and our hips would be because then we figured it would be kind of spreading out all the time so there's no seam in the mattress anywhere for the upper body the only spot where we have seams is right here which ends up being kind of your lower leg area so there's not usually a lot of direct weight on the mattress there so we don't even feel the seams. Another thing we really like is that if the bed is completely made but we want to open up the space and have access to these two seats we can just roll the sheets up from the bottom a little bit put the table away and then we've got our seats here and then there's really minimal effort to just make the bed at the end of the day. So the backrest flips up but then this part flips up as well and we wanted to be able to have access to the storage area from inside the van and not only from the back so that means that we have way more accessible storage so we came up with this rope system to adjust the backrest so we ran a copper pipe along the back of the backrest with a rope running through it and the copper pipe sort of distributes the weight of the rope so that it doesn't curve the backrest when we're leaning on it and then the rope is anchored sort of halfway down the bed with some dock cleats so what that means is we pretty much have endless options for adjusting the backrest so this is our table. It fits really easily on the side of the bed and this serves two purposes. So it's perfectly sized to fit on the rails here and this is actually what makes the base of the bed. But we also added this flange at the bottom so that we can screw it onto the table leg and make it into a swivel table. The table leg fits on the side of the bed as well and it's just a really simple construction with galvanized pipe and elbows. So we just slide it into the copper tube here. So you just fit it on. You spin it until it tightens and then you've got a table. So this is just a really great low budget table option. It's super versatile. It swings around into all kinds of positions. And then it's great that the tabletop doubles as part of the bed as well. So it's not an extra piece of wood that we have to carry around. We actually got this table designed from our friends at Back to Reality on YouTube. They had a swivel table like this in their van and we modified the design a little bit to use a smaller pipe, but otherwise it's pretty much identical and they have a great tutorial on their channel if you want to check it out. This area was also really important because we wanted to maximize storage and make sure that everything was easily accessible. So under each of our seats, we have a really deep storage area. Um, we've got space for backpacks, extra soap, files, um, basically any sort of extra bulky stuff we can stuff under here, but still have easy access to it. So we each have one of those. And then this step we built so that we would be able to sit at the dinette comfortably without our feet dangling. I've got really short legs and so we doubled the step as extra food storage for heavy stuff that we didn't want to have overhead. So we made sure it was tall enough for cans and uh, this is where we put some of our heavier food stuff. And then you'll notice we've got drilled holes throughout the van. We've got it here in our kitchen cabinet here and in our overhead storage we added all these holes. And so basically those are ventilation holes. In a small space we knew that moisture and humidity could collect pretty easily with just two people living in here and with cooking. So we wanted to make sure that the air was always moving and that we were able to ventilate all the different spaces in the van. So you can see we've got tons of storage under here and it's nice to be able to access it from inside. So we're able to fit two big uh, blue Rubbermaid bins. One of them is kind of our outdoors bin and the other one is a tool bin. We've also got a tool kit here. We can fit our linens and our dirty laundry. We've got two rolling suitcases here in case we travel without the van and we can just use them as storage when they're not being used so we can fit blankets and other travel stuff in there. We have a folding kayak, we have extra water in the back, so a ton of uh, storage space down here. 
We have these two overhead storage units that provide a ton of storage. So we tried to keep most heavy things down below. So we use these for clothes and other lightweight stuff. Um, this is my closet. This is Matt's closet. And then this one longer storage cabinet is for lighter food, like noodles and tea and stuff like that. So my brother helped design the face of these, which was super helpful because it was really challenging and we didn't really know how to get started. Each door has a hole in it, which helps ventilate the cubbies, but it also is a really low tech way to open the door instead of buying hardware. We also designed these supports and we kind of based this off of the support for the hood of a car. So basically if the door is closed, the support is magnetized in place like this. And then when we want to use it, we just unclip it from the magnet, swing it down, and then it just supports in this little corner here. For the latch to keep the doors closed, we just have these magnetic catches. Uh, they're not super strong, but the way that the face of the storage is built, there's this pretty deep lip here. It's almost two inches, so it holds everything in, so nothing's really pushing against the door. Almost all of the wood in here was finished with furniture grade hemp oil. With the hemp oil giving all of the wood this kind of golden glow, and then with the fabric that we ordered, which ended up being almost the exact same color, the space had this very uniform look. And so we decided to get Matt to do some paintings throughout the van to help decorate it. So he did a beautiful heron on the sliding door. He painted a whale on the back doors. We've got our outhouse flowers inside the bathroom. And then another watercolor painting here. When the bed's made, it's six feet long and 54 inches wide, so a little bit wider than a double bed. We didn't build the bed to go to the full width of the van because we wanted to make sure there was airflow circulating around the bed. Another thing we did is we built the bed with slats instead of solid plywood to make sure that there would be ventilation so the mattress could dry out if it ever got damp. One thing we really wanted to have with the bed was to each have a kind of night table. So we've got these built-in bookshelves where we can each put our water bottles, our books, glasses, stuff like that and we also wanted reading lights. We only put two windows in the van and they're both sliding windows with screens, which is great. Uh, we were initially gonna put some in the back as well and then we changed our mind. We realized that the fewer windows we put in, the easier it'll be to manage temperature. So if we had put in a bunch of windows, it would sort of create a more intense greenhouse effect and so the van would be really hot and then the opposite in cold weather, we would be losing all of our heat. So we prioritized comfort and temperature control in the van. So we actually insulated the doors instead and so there's insulation behind those wooden panels. Both windows open up pretty wide and they both have screens. And with our roof vent, we're able to get pretty good airflow in here. Um, and then another reason why we didn't put too many windows is because we like it to be dark when we're sleeping. So we actually have a double curtain rod system. The inner rod is for our blackout curtains that we can put across at night. And then during the day, if we want privacy, but we don't want total darkness, then we've got a lighter set of curtains that we can pull across instead. Over here is our solar power system. This powers our fridge, our lights, and our roof vent. And it's also what we use to charge all our devices. We have two 100 watt solar panels on the roof and it's plugged into this all-in-one solar power generator. So it has the charge controller, the inverter, and the battery all in one box. And this one's called the Apex by Energy. And we can charge it a few different ways. We can charge it with the solar panels. We can charge it with the car 12 volt socket. And it can also be plugged with an extension cord into a regular wall socket. And probably the best thing about this is that it's a lithium battery. So we can store a lot of power in a small lightweight package. So this whole thing weighs only 25 pounds. And we're able to expand the system with other lithium batteries. So we do intend to plug another lithium battery onto this just to have a bigger system. We're probably also gonna add a third 100 watt solar panel because on shoulder seasons when it's gray for long periods, we can struggle a bit to get enough power. You may have noticed that last year we had the Kodiak. Uh, we've donated that one to a woman that we've featured who was living in a yurt for two years without power. And the Apex is just the new version of that. So this system works really great for us. Uh, it's definitely not the perfect solution for everybody. Uh, there's pros and cons to it, but for us, it was perfect. The van was already so complicated to put together that it was nice to have something that we could just put in there, plug in and use right away. We have a smoke detector up here, carbon monoxide detector down there. 
and this is the control for our heater. So we got a Wabasto heater. The fuel for the heater comes from the gas tank of the van, but the power for the small fan that's in it comes from the auxiliary battery that was in the van. It's a nice dry heat and it makes it easier for us to stay in the van longer. And it's also set on a thermostat so we can turn it on and it automatically turns on and off. So this is the bathroom behind this door. It was really important for us to install one of these in the van. It makes it so much more comfortable living in here. We're not always looking for uh, public washrooms everywhere. So basically the door for the bathroom becomes a privacy wall. And this saved a lot of space in the van because we didn't have to build a permanently enclosed space. So once you have the door open, it creates a bit of a wall. And then you can close the front curtains over here to complete the bathroom enclosure. So basically it's a urine diversion toilet. We use a separate, which is basically a funnel that separates liquids and solids. So the liquids go into a plastic pee jug that we can empty into a toilet. And the solids go into a bucket which is lined with compostable bags and sawdust. And for the bucket, we actually bought a stainless steel pot. Uh, that way it doesn't absorb smell as much as a five gallon plastic bucket would. Over here we have the container for our wood chips. Danielle sewed some nice soft storage for all sorts of toiletries. We have more toiletries and toilet paper on the shelf up top. And then we built a small pharmacy for more storage. In terms of smell, a lot of people think that the solids are going to be what stinks more than the liquids, but it's actually usually the urine that stinks more. So what we do is that we try to keep the uh, separate as clean as possible. We have a white vinegar spray that we use all the time, and we try to empty the jugs as often as possible. For the solids, I actually installed a 12 volt computer fan in the toilet box, and this makes a huge difference. This way, by having the fan in the toilet box, it exhausts the smells at the source and directly to the outside. So the 12 volt computer fan is in the toilet box. There's a tube going from it and exhausting through the outside. So we actually had to drill a hole on the side of the van and add a, a small louver vent. And then there's a switch here to turn it on and off. And because it's a small computer fan, it takes very little power. For this design, we have to give full credit to our friends, Vanessa and Adam on YouTube. So that's where we got the idea. You'll notice that we have no shower in the van. Usually what we do is that, well, in the summer, we try to swim as much as possible in lakes. We also, every once in a while, we'll pay to stay at a campground and use the showers there. Sometimes we can even pay a small fee at a campground, not to sleep over, but just to use the shower. And that's a bit cheaper. And in between showers, we use a lot of wet wipes. Here we have our front privacy curtains. On the back side, we have uh, blackout curtains to block out the light. And then on the other side, we got this nice plant green pattern. For the roof vent, we went with a Max Air. It was a bit of an expensive option, but it has a really well-built rain guard on it so it can be pouring rain outside and the fan can still be open and bringing in fresh air. So that's a really amazing feature. It also has 10 speeds, so on the lowest speeds, it's very quiet. Over here at the front, we just have a uh, two small bins, one for recycling, one for garbage. Uh, we're just lining the garbage with paper bags. Uh, that way it creates less waste. Over here at the back, you can see how big our storage space is. So we have our Rubbermaid bins here. We have our extra jug of water. Uh, we have a folding kayak, which is pretty awesome for enjoying the outdoors, going out on the water. It's not a perfect design. There's a few things that could be improved upon, but overall it's pretty amazing that you can fold up a huge kayak like this and fit it into the trunk of a vehicle. And we have two folding chairs here and just plenty of space for everything we need. It feels somewhat unreal to be here almost two years after we bought this van. We've put so much time and effort and thought into building this van for ourselves and we're really happy with how it turned out. It really is the perfect work and living vehicle for us um, to do our work and to travel and explore. 
We definitely couldn't have done it without the help of a few key people. Danielle's dad helped us with a lot of the build. Uh, Danielle's brother gave us a lot of advice and helped us also. Danielle's mom did all the sewing for the van and she also cooked a lot of food and kept us alive while we were working like maniacs building this. Mm -hmm. And we didn't come up with every single idea in this van ourselves. So we're gonna put links down below to any videos or blog posts that we think you might find helpful if you're doing your own build. If we do have a product um, that we used in the van that we're really happy with, we're gonna link to it in the description so you can check it out and it'll be that much easier for you to find. And just to be completely transparent, we did pay for everything in this van ourselves. The only things that were given to us were the Apex by Energy for review, so the solar generator and the solar panels. And they've given us a link so that if you want to buy any of their solar products, you'll get a really great price. So that'll be down below as well. And the separate urine diverter in our toilet that was given to us years ago and we've been holding on to it and waiting for the right van toilet to use it in and we really like it. Last but not least, Oru Kayak sent us a kayak to try and we really liked the idea of this folding kayak so if you want to check that out we'll also put a link down below. We're also going to do a couple more videos about the van build. We're going to do one that's going to detail the uh, natural building materials that we used and we're going to do another one that's going to show the whole process of building the van from start to finish. So stay tuned for those. If you like this video, please share it. Be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.